The book of Proverbs says, laughter maketh good like medicine. So this is a book on church jokes. Pastors, deacons, people in the pew, missionaries, Sunday school, tithes, offerings, signs, bulletins, visitors, weddings, funerals, heaven, and much, much more. <laughs> yes, they are. So I picked the dandy. I went to the Heading Country Church. Young city preacher had been assigned to a country church. He was making visits to his new neighbors. He stopped at the first farm he came to, and he said, do you belong to the Christian family? He asked the old farmer, and the farmer replied, no, they live two farms down. The preacher said, well, what I mean is, are you lost? The farmer says, no, Mabel and I've lived here for 60-some years. Exasperated, the preacher pressed on. I mean, are you ready for judgment day? What's that, the farmer asked. Well, it could be today or tomorrow, the preacher said. Well, the farmer said, when you find out for sure, let me know. We don't get out much, so my wife will probably want to go to both days. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ooh, glory. <laughs> oh, my. There are some dandies in there, I'll tell you that much. There's some good ones. Oh, boy. All right. Are you in James? Chapter 2. Pete, you've already has read the portion of Scripture. We will try to tackle the verses from 11 through 20. I don't know how many of those we'll, we'll be able to handle, but we'll see what we can do. You've been enjoying our study on James. James is, James is a practical, 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 practical. I like practical. Do you like being practical? He talks about the, where the rubber meets the road. You know what? It, it's a one thing to, to claim you're a Christian, but you know, you want to be a Christian, you need to live like a Christian. You need to walk the walk. Not just talk the talk, walk the walk. I'm going to give you some information on, on both uh, outlines I have. This one's from John MacArthur. He has some interesting points that he, he makes in this particular passage of Scripture, in this exact passage of Scripture. He's talking about a parent faith that is dead. Of course, we know that James is writing to Jewish Christians that have been dispersed and scattered. God's laws were not efficacious for salvation. They were not necessary in order to bring about salvation. In other words, works were not necessary to bring about salvation. So James talks about the mere mental assent concerning faith. What we do reveals who we are. I like that. That's very important. What we do reveals who we are. The genuineness of one's profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord is evidenced by more by what a person does than by what he claims. Did you catch that? People are watching what you do quicker than they are listening to what you have to say. I would rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one walk with me than merely point the way. The eye is a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Find counsel is confusing, but example is always clear. The best of the preachers are those who live their creed for to see the good in action is what everybody needs. I can soon learn how to do it if you let me see it done. Your tongue may too fast run, and your lectures you deliver may be very wise and true, but I'd rather get my learning by observing what you do, for I may misunderstand you and the high advice you give, but there is no misunderstanding of how you act and how you live. Written by Edgar Guest. People are watching you. 
In another place it's written, you are living epistles, known and read of all men. And so James is that type of man. I'll show you my faith by the things I do. And that's where we're at today. We're in the book of James chapter 2. All right, I made a notation here. I need to get there. You're already there. Okay, here we go. Now, these are some school notes I've had. Boy, these are, are in bad shape, but I've had them for a long time. Huh. All right. If we fail to obey, to love our neighbor as thyself, will not do any good with any of the lesser matters of the word. Isn't that so true? We've got to take care of some of the things that I think is fundamental. Loving our neighbors as ourselves. In verse 12, I must read verse 11. For he that said, do not commit adultery, did not kill, said also, do not kill. If thou commit no adultery, yet if you kill, you're a transgressor of the law. Verse 12, so speak ye and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Our words, our deeds, our attitudes will be judged. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. What we say to people and how we say it, that's important. What we say and how we say it. You know, two people can say the same thing to somebody, but they can say it in two different ways. One person can say it in such a way that they can accept it. The next person that has the same thing to say will say it in such a way that that person is angry and upset and offended. What we say, how we say it. Showing mercy or refusing to show mercy. Hmm. Wow. That's a pretty important thing to, I have a pretty good example of that. I remember my brother-in-law uh, sharing one Sunday about this very thing, about mercy, showing mercy. You want to understand what mercy is about? It's when you're going down the road and that there blue flashing light comes behind you. <laughs> when you're thinking already in your, in your rear view mirror, he's probably after somebody else. <laughs> you're hoping that he is. You're really hoping that he is. And so you, so you want to pull off so he can get around you. And what, to your amazement, he pulls in right behind you. <laughs> I was hoping he went around me. That's why I come on off. I was hoping he went around me. He is after me. I want to see your license and registration. You know the, the routine. You're in a hurry there, Mr. Wilmer. Yeah, a little bit. Where are you going? You know, that kind of conversation. Well, I ain't going to write you up today. I'm going to give you a warning. Whew. That's mercy. Are you listening? Did you catch it? That's mercy. Now, if he would have written me up, mm, that wouldn't be mercy. You want God to be merciful with you? Then you need to be merciful to other people. Because what you demand of other people, God's going to demand of you. He'll demand it. So be merciful. Show mercy. Let the words that come out of your mouth be saturated with love. Let it be free from harshness and criticism and bitterness and gossip. Let them be words of comfort and concern and compassion backed with love. You following after me now? Let's go to verse 13. Oh, the law of liberty in, in verse 2 is grace. That's the law of liberty. That's grace. I wrote that in right in parenthesis right behind that. The law of liberty is grace. Verse 13, for he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy. And mercy rejoices against judgment. You want to receive mercy? Show mercy. God knows how hard it is for us to change our feelings and our attitudes, but he expects that change to occur in each and every one of our lives. 
Let the scriptures be our standard. Let love be our law and let mercy be our message. Because every believer will give an account of his words and deeds when he appears before the judgment seat of Christ. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36. One of the tests of the reality of our faith is how we treat other people. Can we pass the test? First, you receive the life, and the second is that you reveal the life. Receiving the life is receiving the life of Jesus Christ in your heart and life. And then we're expected to reveal Jesus in our life. Verse 14, still with me? Anybody still with me? What does it profit, my brethren? Though a man say that he has faith and has not works, can faith save him? We are going to look at three kinds of faith here. Our first faith we're going to look at is dead faith. Dead faith. Verse 17, skipping ahead just a little bit. Even so faith, if it has not works, it's dead, being alone. So dead faith. We substitute words for deeds. Walk doesn't measure up to our talk. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead. And then we see another kind of faith. Verse 19 is a demonic faith. Verse 19, thou believest that there's one God. Thou dost dwell, the devils also believe and tremble. Even the demons have faith. Demons are touched. Also as their emotions. They believe and tremble. They believe in the deity of Christ. They believe in his sonship. They believe there is a place of torment and punishment. They submit to the power of the word. In Matthew 9, 29, when the demoniac met Jesus, when he, when he stepped off the boat, Immediately, the demons in the man said to Jesus, Have thou, hast thou come to torment us before our time? Matthew 9, 29. And a third kind of faith that we see here is a dynamic faith. In verse 18, yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Dynamic faith results in a changed life. It involves the will. The mind understands the truth. The heart desires the truth. And the will acts upon the truth. Verse 15, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily Food And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding that you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Charity that consists in bare words will not avail. It will not avail either you or the poor. If you say you're going to do it, do it. It's the heart of James. Here is the title of my message. I didn't give you my title. Genuine faith produces genuine works. Genuine faith produces genuine works. I believe the only test of a man's salvation is through his works. It's through his works. Just words without helping someone in need, what does it profit? How many words fills a hungry stomach? Talk all you want. If you have the means by with to help that one, why don't you help them? Well, is there not government agencies? Does that sound like a Christmas story? Is there not government agencies to take care of the poor? Yes, Scrooge. Scrooge had a different viewpoint on that when he got awake. James says, do it. Don't talk about it. 
be ye warmed and filled. When you have it within your power to do it, you better be doing it. Do it. Go do something about it. Fix it. Fix it. Four marks. Four marks. I want to give you four marks of a Christian faith. Of, a, of an authentic Christian faith. The first mark, faith is not indifferent. People of genuine faith will become personally involved in meeting genuine needs. Number two, faith is not independent, but it is in partnership with works. James says that the person who has real faith will also have real works. It is a product of his faith. You see, barrenness in a professing believer exposes his insincerity. Ooh. No action, no faith. That's what James said. You say you're a Christian, you don't help this fellow. No action, no faith. You can profess all you want. But if you're not doing anything about it, you're just a professor. You're a, profess you're a professional professor. I talked to somebody in the phone some time ago that he was only authorized to apologize. <laughs> some job you got authorized to apologize. So in other words, you can't do nothing to fix it. Well, that's not my department. Oh, yeah, I've heard that before. Ain't nobody wants to do nothing. They don't want to do nothing. Well, what are you getting paid for? What's your job there? He don't even know. Well, if you don't know, ain't nobody else knows. No action, no faith. The faith that marks the difference between heaven and hell always, always, always manifests itself in righteous deeds. You're listening to James? Always manifests itself in righteous deeds. And thirdly, faith, it is not invisible. But it should be on display. It should bring to light. It should exhibit the real thing. It should be displayed and evidenced in a spirit of love. Pious expressions seem so to be so religious. But you see, actions are what people hear. Actions is what people hear. James says, Thou makest a profession, and sayest thou hast faith. I make no such boast, but leave my works to speak for me. I will show you my faith by my works. It is the only way that we can prove to another that our faith is real. Wow. And then there's Hebrews. Chapter 11. I'm going to make a mark there. That's where we're going to stop. We have a list there in Hebrews of the heroes of faith. They had faith that worked. They had faith that produced. They had faith that resulted in action. All in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. It even begins with the, the definition of faith, the evidence of things hoped for. It's evidence. Something we see, something we can feel, something we can see, something that we can visualize. All right. Let's stop right there. That's a good spot. You can make a notation there. We'll stop there next Sunday. The youth are going to uh, have the service. All right. We will take prayer concerns this time. You have a prayer concern in your heart? 